So if you ask me how I know that God is real, I could point to a few events in my life. Uh, there was a time when I was on the beach in the Dominican Republic early one morning after a storm and uh, I knew that uh, God was walking with me and uh, warning me that, uh, that I was in danger. I could also um, tell you about a time when I uh, asked for uh, God to send me a sign that uh, he was in fact there and did exist and uh, he did send me that sign and uh, did show me that he is real. The time that I came to know that there is a life after death is when I almost died in the Dominican Republic. Um, and whatever had happened on the operating table and uh, I know that uh, the afterlife is real. So I'm going to tell you what happened here. Uh, about 2008, while I was living in the Dominican Republic uh, with my fiance at the time, uh, I woke up one morning and had a um, a lump, a hard lump, in the lower lumbar region, if you know what I'm saying. And right away I knew what it was. I said, Oof, this is, uh, is going to be a, a tough, uh, tough ride, this one. So I uh, decided to go back to New York to see what I could do uh, about this. And uh, I, I knew what it was. and. Uh, Interestingly enough, my fiancé at the time had just been through almost the exact same thing, only in a different part of her body. So I come back to New York and all of these doctors that are professional killers, in my opinion, told me I needed chemotherapy and if I didn't have chemotherapy that I would be dead and I know that game and it's all about making money because they make half a million a million dollars every time they give someone chemotherapy which really only advances the march toward death okay I knew this wasn't a life or death situation but that's how they make their money. So I said, I'm going to die. I'm going to go back and die in the Dominican Republic with the people who I love. I'm going to go back to the place that I love and I'm going to die happy. But I knew I wasn't going to die. I knew that this was all just a, a con that these doctors in the United States uh, pull on everybody and anybody who you know, walks into their hospital and their office. When I get back to the Dominican Republic, I had three, three doctors tell me the same thing. Yeah, that's all so they can make money. They'll make money by killing you. This is a basic, simple operation, and it's going to be done in one afternoon, and you'll be out of the hospital in two days, three days, something like that. So time comes to the surgery. I pick uh, one of the three doctors. Uh, two were Dominican, one was Cuban. I picked the Dominican doctor in Santiago, Dominican Republic, is where they did the surgery in the, uh, in the public hospital there. So, one of the public hospitals. So, as they're preparing me for the surgery, the uh, nurses start shaving me in the lower lumbar region and I'm saying to myself, uh, why don't you just do that when I'm knocked out? You know, that way uh, I'm not going to be moving around so much. And they said, uh, 
No, you're you're not getting knocked out. What do you mean? We're you're just getting local anesthesia around the area we're operating on. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! Everyone, stop everything! Uh, uh, we're not doing this. <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here and watch you operate on my junk. Forget about it. Uh, this is you have to give me anesthesia. Get the anesthesiologist. Get him in here. And uh, I'm being knocked out for this surgery. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. We're not doing this uh, that way. Not today, not tomorrow, not never. And, uh, oh no, we'll, we'll put a screen up. I said, no, 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 no screen. I'm getting up, I'm going. Either you're knocking me out or I'm leaving. So they agreed to give me anesthesia to knock me out. And they put the mask over me, and, and as I'm going out, I see nothing but black and you know how the 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 black sort of comes in around your eyes when you go out and that's what happened and I'm looking at nothing but black canvas before me and I see a tiny dot uh, it's so tiny. I actually had to focus on it to, to see it. And as I'm looking at this tiny white dot amongst the black, right, I hear what sounds like radio transmissions uh, jumbled, very faint and they start getting louder, a little louder. And I'm getting pulled toward that little white dot, which is now evolving into a shape. And the radio jumble is now becoming the only way I can describe it is the most beautiful music that I've ever heard. It was, I mean, you know, you might chuckle a little bit, but it sounded like angels playing a harp but I've never heard music so beautiful, ever, ever, anywhere since before or after. And this shape came to be all, all white against the black background, but it was like almost digitized, you know? It was almost like, like when you look at a monitor, you look at a, a television and you see a little tiny little digitization you know and, and a little digitization and it said to me I could hear its words it said come with me you are with me now and I knew not I thought not I had a concept, not it was said, I knew in here. Instantly had the knowledge without any study that that was Jesus. I knew that I was in the presence of our Lord and I knew he was telling me to come with him. And as I'm going toward him, my own voice said to me, in my head or wherever, said, it's not your time. It's not your time. And I could hear people in Spanish, and I understood what it meant, 
right? Like I understood what was happening, but they were saying in Spanish that I lost a lot of blood, that there was some sort of a problem, that they cut a vein that they shouldn't have cut, and they needed blood. They needed to give me blood. And like that, pop, there was a big white light just came upon me and I was in the corner at the ceiling. I could see them operating on me, bringing the blood to give me a transfusion. And they were operating on me. And I believe I was trying to tell myself, wake up Ben, wake up Ben. You're not, it's not your time, you can't die, you can't die. But I could see myself from the corner of the operating room. And then two or three days later, I woke up in the hospital room. And as I was waking up, I could see the one bare light bulb. Remember, it's a public hospital in the Caribbean. This is not the Plaza Hotel. I could see the one bare light bulb and I was in such pain. My whole body was in pain. And um, either my fiance or my fiance's sister, one of the two, one of her sisters, maybe, it might have been her, went running out and said, hey, he, he's awake, he's awake now. And the, the nurses came in, and uh, then my fiance came to my side and said, uh, "Yeah, they they cut your uh, your vein, your varicose vein. You had uh, you had a uh, you lost a lot of blood, and um, so you know I recovered." I was in a lot of pain. It took more than two or three days to recover. Yeah, that was my experience uh, with uh, dying and coming back to life. That's what happened. And I was inspired to share this with you. Uh, but, you know, there is a life after death.